Throughout your career, you've played sort of in, in many different styles, like, and you have an incredible sort of diversity and range. Um, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> nice to say. Bro bro broadly, you're, you, you've sort of moved from an arti um, acoustic rock to sort of a blues genre. Yeah. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I was yeah. always doing both. Yeah. yeah. And sort of, do you have a favorite? Any particular reason for the change? Well, well I've always loved both, right? So I grew up listening to, uh, I grew up in the golden era of the 80s, where like the. And, and this, this is where I have to really tread lightly because I don't want to put any music down. But in the 80s, it's better music. So because you would get, it was just more, there was more music per square inch in the music. So it's very rare nowadays to have a hit song also be musically complex. They're almost sort of, you know, they're antithetical to one another. But in the 80s, the biggest hit in the world could be one of the most well-composed, beautifully sort of played things, like, you know, Genesis and The Police. That's really complex stuff. Stuart Copeland playing the drums. That's his, that, if, if The Police came out today, you know, they wouldn't be popular for some reason or another because, the, because of the way they play. They, they'd, 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 they'd sort of intimidate the listener, yeah. you know? And so I grew up in a household where just the normal everyday turning the channels, you were hearing really incredible, well-composed, well-performed music. So I was always weaned on that, right? So I always came up on what I didn't realize was uh, very dense music composition. But then I discovered guitar. So that was the other half of this thing was like, I always loved pop music. I always loved Huey Lewis and the News. Huey, Huey Lewis and the News is a blues band, you know? Um, Phil Collins is, a, is, a, is an R&B freak, you know? There was, there was a strain of musicality, of a heritage R&B blues, uh, you know, a, a really a, a strong presence there. Then when I picked up the blues, in that this sort of became the, you know, big quest in my life, and the answer is to put them both together. Yeah. That's when I'm the happiest. If you ever see me do a blues thing, it's because I did too much pop thing. Yeah. And I really shouldn't have to do that if I, if I compose correctly. I should be doing both at the same time. And, and, and all the songs that I look at on a set list every night and go, I can't wait to play that, um, those are the songs where the mix of the two is perfect. And when I hit it, it's fantastic. And when I don't, I have to play one song after the other to get the same effect. So I have to actually play a pop song and then a blues song to get that same effect that when I am at my best, I can play one song yeah. that combines the like, both of them. Like in the 80s. Right? Like in the 80s, yeah. I mean, like, no one thinks that stuff is corny. You know, it survived because it, it still was connected to um, the heritage of, you know, there were, like, even metal bands, right? Like, even, even you could take a metal band, the guy had hair out to here, and you can say, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> well, those guys were sitting on the edge yeah. of their bed for hours. You know, they were sort of the original nerds. They were the original cool nerds were like guys in metal bands, right? Like all these guys from Rat and Poison and, you know, they were, they were, they were shredding, you know? And shredding means sitting in a room yelling, Mom, I'm practicing, <laughs> you know, for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. And I really think that ethic was very important, you know? Yeah.